My name's Jake. I'm uh, 33 years old, and uh, it's hard to tell people what I do. Um, I make things. I, I fabricate. I weld. Uh, I dabble in metallurgy. I use a lathe, a machine. Uh, I pour metal. I, I CAD design. Uh, I do some little bit of 3D printing. I make stuff. And it's, you know, like, what do you do? I really can't tell you all that I do because it's just such a wide range. Um, I got pretty lucky. Uh, I was 20 years old. And um, I started as an apprentice in an auto restoration shop building Bugattis. Uh, that's what they did. Is they, they restored these classic French cars. And, um, yeah, I walked in the back room. And I saw my 2B boss working on a 34 Bugatti Type 57 Roadster. Like he was making the trunk lid from scratch. And I knew that, that that's where I was going to be. I didn't know how I was going to do it. I'd, I'd work for free to do it. Um, but yeah, I knew I was, I was going to be doing that for a while. All the money that I was making, I was putting into machines. In 2012, I started my own shop. And... Um, over the course of the last five years, I've had my own business, the Flying Dutchman Company, and just been making things, special things, things that don't come on the shelf, you know, things you can't buy in a store, and uh, that's what I've been doing. So my dad had an 83 BMW R80 RT, and uh, when I was in college, I really wanted that bike, and um, he, wouldn't, he wouldn't give it to me or sell it to me, you know, when he was going to get rid of it. So I had to track down the guy he sold it to, buy it back, and then, uh, yeah, I got it back in possession. Um, I did all these mods to it, and uh, I was having a lot of fun with it. I got invited to some shows, which was really neat. I was doing some things that weren't typical, like I stretched the swing arm, I lowered it like to the ground almost, I gave it this crazy stripe paint job. Um, I had done a job for a guy, um, he didn't want to pay me, and unfortunately that happens a lot, like these guys think they can get around it, like it's a game to them. It's my life and it's a game to them, it's their toys that I, that I make for them. And instead of paying me, he sued me. So um, like a year later, the police came, they seized my bike, and I was crushed. I was literally devastated, depressed, and um, yeah, I went into like a downward spiral. It was ugly. It was really ugly. And um, yeah, I'm starting over. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to do it again. So this bike is a new bike. It's different than the other bike. This one's an 84 R100 RS. And I've done the similar things because I... You know, they may have gotten the bike, but they didn't get all the parts, the templates, and everything I've learned from doing that other one. So this one is more simple, it's more direct, and I've spent less time modifying it, um, and it's just coming out a lot better. So on to the next one. Um, this one doesn't have the big bore kit, 
You know, it doesn't have the titanium lifters. It doesn't have like six grand into the motor like the other one did. But um, I've already ridden this thing, you know, 20, 25,000 miles. So it's reliable. All I'm doing is changing the aesthetic pieces and, you know, like the swing arm, like I said before. Um, and it's ready to go. It's ready to go right now. So today I'm trying to finish it up. I'm trying to finish the swing arm. I just got it running last night for the first time in like a month. I tore the thing apart to go to wheels and waves. Um, didn't quite make it, but finishing this bike the right way for me is more important than going to a show. Um, eventually it'll have the turbo on it like before, but right now I think it looks great and um, it sounds great. One of the next phases is gonna be the two wheel drive. Um, but for now, I'm just gonna get it running as is. Um, it's got the new subframe, the new tank mods. Uh, I've changed the headlights to LED lights. Um, I've got a bigger oil cooler. Uh, I've got a two into one exhaust. I've got these crazy super knobby tires on it. I live on a dirt road and uh, these don't wash out when I'm trying to take the corners. So today, just working on the swing arm and, uh, and trying to get this thing mobile again. The brakes work, it runs. Uh, got a wire in the headlight and uh, mount the license plate taillight. But uh, everything else is functional. That's one thing that I've learned to do over time. I've, you know, I used to get really ambitious when I was younger and I just tear apart everything. Like when I was younger, um, my dad worked long hours. So after school, I would you know, go into the backyard and I'd make things. I'd go in the garage and I'd dig through the, the five gallon buckets of junk that my dad had saved. Um, with this bike, I've left the mechanicals alone. Like the majority of the mechanicals, yeah, the swing arm's different. But I made a jig for that. I already have the tooling to make that. So that's not that big of a deal. Um, the exhaust, that's an external part, you know. I'm not jumping into the guts of it. Um, and so yeah, it should be pretty reliable. And I'd like to do some trips pretty soon. It's just really nice having the support of all these people take notice of what I do. I'm just one guy in a shop um, making things uh, at all hours of the day. Um, it, it's cool to be noticed. Um, and it, and it really helps me uh, realize the scope of how big the community is. And there's all these other guys making stuff in their garages. And that's really neat. You get to see what they're doing. They get to see what I'm doing. And it's like we push each other. You know, it's a friendly competition. It's not a, a malicious thing. or a, There can be a lot of one-upmanship on Instagram and social media and all that crap but I don't view it that way. I'm just having a good time.